questions for you this morning. We'll go over those and then we'll get started with the portion. Okay, uh, after church, ladies, today after church, if you're part of the ladies committee meeting and want to help out with, uh, with their events after church, Zella, Karen, they're going to have a meeting with the ladies and go over some things. Uh, I wasn't free to find out what that was about, so. <laughs> And this afternoon we got pastor's dinner for our pastor's birthday, which is Father 
You never want it perfect, you just want it my heart. Yeah. If the story isn't over, if the story isn't good, then failure's never final when the father's in the room. Failure's never final when the father's in the room. Oh, 
said to the king, O good Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. I want you to listen to what they're saying. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that, that we will not serve thy gods, or your gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I want you to turn around and look at your neighbor while you're sitting down this morning and say, he's still God. He's still God. He's still Amen. I want you to turn around and maybe yell across at somebody across the aisle and say, he's still God. He's still God. There you go. Look at somebody and say, he's never going to change. He's never going to change. 
Amen. He's still God. Amen. We read to you this morning a, a very familiar scripture, and I'm going to get our text or story in the in the word, and I'm going to get to it in just a few minutes. But I want to go this first of all. I'm going to go to First Chronicles chapter number 16. You don't have to turn there. Just I'm just going to read just a little clip of it. First Chronicles chapter 16. That's in one verse, maybe two verses. It says, start at verse 25. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. Somebody say, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. This is from the book of 1 Chronicles chapter number 6. The Lord is great and he is worthy to be praised. Now let me say that one more time. The Lord is great and he is worthy to be praised. We, we are, now give the Lord a praise. Right? But this doesn't always or just apply to when things are good. Let, let me, I think I might have went over your head. The Lord is great and he is greatly to be praised. But this doesn't always just apply or it always just when things are good. See, we have a tendency that when things are good, we're, we're, we want to praise the Lord. When things are good, when the bills are paid and when everybody's healthy and everything is good, we, we, we want to praise the Lord. We'll lift our hands and we'll shout. But when, when things aren't always good, many times we'll praise the Lord. Uh, uh, that, that, we're often, uh, we'll, we'll, with maybe, maybe a child is in the hospital and, and the Lord does a miracle. And so we're, we're lifting our hands and we're praising the Lord because he's done a miracle. Or mama's in the hospital and, uh, and, and the church prays and we agree together. We call on the name of the Lord and the Lord moves on behalf of, of that mama and, and she comes out and she's whole and we'll praise the Lord. Sometimes we may pray, pray for a father or a grandfather or a grandmother or an aunt or an uncle and they're in the hospital and, 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 the, and the Lord doesn't move the way we want him to move. They pass away. But let me preach to you this morning the Lord is still great and he's going to take praise. sometimes to blame him when things go wrong in our life. We're too quick sometimes to blame him when everything's not going exactly the way we want it to go. We're too quick sometimes to blame him when the government is beginning to be oppressive. We're too quick sometimes to blame him when, when we're feeling poorly in our body. But, but here's the thing. He is worthy to be praised in the good times and in the bad times. He, oh, somebody help the preacher right here. He's worthy to be praised when I'm on the mountaintop or when I'm in the valley. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised in the midst of the storm and in the time of peace. I will still lift my hands and praise Him because He is still God. right now from my own backyard. Sometimes we pray and things don't go the way that we want them to go. But that doesn't mean that he is not still God. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, he's still God. Oh, oh thank you, Spirit of God. Somebody, right, right, everybody, I want you to close your eyes. I don't want you to tell your neighbor, but, but you that's going right through the middle of a storm right now, the, you that's having a battle of your life, uh, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to speak to yourself uh, and I want you to tell yourself uh, that God is still God yeah. right now. God for unanswered prayers. Yeah. yeah. Evidently, he seen a girl he wanted, prayed for, and then when he graduated and found out she wasn't one stuff, she wasn't stuff. Somebody, oh Lord, now some of y'all can amen to that one right there. 
Don't look at your neighbor and say, Lord, I wish the Lord you'd answer the prayer. I had to no, no, I don't say that. See, he's still God. See, we are living in an increasingly difficult days. I told someone this week, or last week, I guess it's this week, they texted me earlier this week, and they were talking about all the events that's going on in America today. Uh, they're talking about, I'm not, I'm not going to get on no kind of agenda this morning. And I know COVID, and I know, you know, we got the variant of this, but they don't have to test, really test for it. We got blah, blah, blah. And we can mask up, or we can unmask, or we can take vaccine, or we can, and I'll leave that up to your personal decision, what you want to do. But basically what it amounts to is the government, not necessarily the government, the Antichrist is setting up to try to control you. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. You, don't have, you don't have to be a spiritual whiz to figure this out. Okay. You don't have to be, you know, they're, they're trying to pass laws as of now. Even as of now, there are those that are trying to pass laws. Now, I'm not getting on Democrat or Republican. I'm not doing that at all. Actually, I'm a born-again child of God. And so uh, uh, they're trying to pass laws at this particular point to where that you cannot do things uh, simply because you don't have a car. Now, somebody said, well, Pastor, that's a good thing. Now, let, let me just show you something. It, 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 somebody asked me, said, is that the mark of it? And I don't think it's the mark, but I think it's setting us up. Yeah. It's setting us up for what is to come. Now, I, I, that's all I'm going to say about that. Someone texted me this past week, uh, a, a friend of mine, and they were all up. And I said, let me tell you something. You don't need to be afraid. This is the greatest time to be a part of the body of Christ. Yeah. Amen. The first part of the church saw him go away in the clouds and heard him say, heard him say, I'm going to come back and get you and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Yeah. But this part is going to be the one that sees him. Especially for the born again Christian. We're heading, and let me tell you, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to be a downer, but we're heading toward times that's going to be harder than what they are now. You know, unless the Lord comes, persecution, opposition, oppression, probably like we've never seen, uh, uh, think, things are going to get, can get worse. Troublesome times. The Bible says in 2 Timothy, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. It goes on and gives a great big list of what's coming in the end time. And I believe that we are there. It's a troublesome time. But troublesome times are nothing for God's people. Amen. That's no mountain for a climber. That's no river for a swimmer. We're living at troubles and times. Are not, we, we've had them before. Somebody help me. That's what's wrong with people today. That's what, oh, I'm about to get on the soapbox now. That's what's wrong with folks uh, because we've never had to deal with anything. We've never had, we've always got somebody that's trying to bail you out. Let me tell you, there is something about walking through the middle of the storm uh, and lifting up your head and saying, God, I don't feel you, but I know you're real. text that I read to you today talks about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar, let me, let me, let me slow down a second. Nebuchadnezzar had overthrown almost everything, his, his government. And they captured Jerusalem, they captured Israel. And when they captured Israel, they had, they had brought the intelligent young men and women with them. They had brought them to, to, to brainwash them, if you will. To, to bring their intelligence and put it into their government, which is a really smart thing to do. You're bringing their intelligence and you're only making yourself better. So he brought them into his government. And part of those, 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 those children that he brought in, we know a fourth, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the scripture says uh, in the text that we read to you today that Nebuchadnezzar had made a golden image. 
And he had made this image and he set it out in the plain. And he made a law. He made a decree is what the scripture says, but it is a law. He made a law that when the music begins to play and you're in the vicinity of this, uh, this, this uh, 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 image, you're to bow down and you're to worship this image. That was the law. And so when he made this image, he called, he had a big party, he called all the princes and the governors and the sheriffs, and he called everybody that was anybody, all the young men that was coming up in his kingdom, all the people from the colleges, from the schools, and everybody that was anybody, anybody that's ever going to be anybody, he called them and brought them in so that they could look at this, this beautiful statue that he had made, so, so that they could worship and the music began to play, when the music began to play, uh, all of a sudden uh, uh, the sound of the music began to roll, uh, and uh, there stood three Three boys by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were still standing erect. They were not bowing. Somebody was telling on them. Well, somebody's always going to tell on the people of God. Somebody help the pastor right now. We're always going to be considered the outcast. We're never going to be popular. I don't know why we think we need to be popular because we are different. We are not from this world. This world is just a place that we are going to. I've got another place called heaven in which I'm going to. Somebody help the pastor preach this morning. So the, we find in this text uh, that, that, that uh, of the three Hebrew children, I want to look at it this morning and give me about ten more minutes. Uh, I want to look at this real familiar scripture and I want to preach to you the fact that no matter what God's children face, uh, He is still God. Yeah. Yeah. Give him a shout of praise. Yeah. Now this ain't going to be popular. It's probably going to get blocked on Facebook. <laughs> We're probably going to have some fact checkers check us out. <laughs> but my first point is this. I wrote it down so I won't forget it. Though the government denies him, he's still God. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say that again. Though the government denies him or may deny him, he is still God. King Nebuchadnezzar yeah. erected that statue and, and he sent word and all of his subordinates and all of them came, the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs and everybody at the college stood, everybody come and they gathered around and Nebuchadnezzar was not, but Nebuchadnezzar was not the first ruler to ever do this and he won't be the last. Our current government that, that we have, they don't have a golden image that's set up in Washington, but there is an attempt by many in the leadership to deny the very sovereignty of God. Secularism, humanism, somebody help me, atheism, it's on the rise in America. In recent decades, our leaders have attempted to ban God from our schools, to ban Him from our courthouses, to ban the way we as pastors bring the word. They've tried to ban it. They've taken prayer and the Bible out of schools. They've banned the Ten Commandments. They've endorsed immorality and said it's fine when it's against the word of God. They have legalized the murder of babies. I'm about to preach this morning in the mother's womb. They've attempted to redefine marriage between a man and a woman. They have legalized murder. They, 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 they've done everything they can in their budget. But let me preach to you today. He is still God. sense at all. I don't care what, I don't care if you're a man or a woman, boy or girl, child. If you really take a look, an honest look at our country, it's apparent that we are headed to some dark days. Yes. It's apparent. Real apparent. I'm not saying I don't love people. I love everybody. I really do. I, I, have, I have a love-hate thing going on. I love people, but sometimes I just don't want to be around them. Amen. I liked it. My sister, she texted me yesterday. I was working at the farm. She texted me yesterday. 
Some of you are going to get a kick out of this one. She texted me yesterday, and my sister, she's four years younger than me, and she's got three children, and she's got four grandchildren, and they dropped all four grandchildren off. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to just be honest and tell you the way it says it. Well, she, this is what the text, I always thought I'd pull it out and I'd read it to you. And she's got one, Landry, he's about, he's probably six months old. And he's got a sister named Larkin who is as sneaky as they come. <laughs> sneaky. I mean, she is just sneaky. Then her, her oldest daughter, uh, Heather Riley Kate, is the youngest of hers. I think she's two. And she ain't sneaky about nothing. She'll do it right in front of you and laugh while she does it. <laughs> she just, you know, she don't care. Whatever. And Harper's just like, I'm over it all. Harper's the oldest. She's just like, I'm over And so my sister sent me a text yesterday, and she said, I've got all four grandchildren, and I'm going crazy. And it was a woman with her hair all up there, and she's going crazy. And she said, one can't poop. <laughs> one is pinching everybody and saying, I didn't do it. The other one is running through everybody. And the fourth one is hiding under the covers on the top bunk in the back bedroom. That's Harper. So, I'm saying this to go where I'm going now. And I texted her back, and I took a picture of, like, cows or whatever it was in front of me. I took a picture, and I said, I'm all by myself, out on the farm, nobody to bother me, no children, nobody telling me what I can do and what I can't do, and I need this or I need that. I said, I'm just out here in peace. And she sent me back a message. She hated it. No, she didn't say hate me, but she sent me a message back. You see, I said that to say this. There's times I like people, sometimes I don't like people, but I do love people. I love their souls. I don't want to see people die in hell. But we're living in a generation where we want to turn away from God. We're living in a generation where we do not want to look toward God. And if we look at this, Nebuchadnezzar denied the one and true God. And, and he instituted false worship. That's what he did. He denied God and he instituted false worship. And so, uh, uh, but this did not change the fact even though the government, even though the, the leader of the, 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 the strongest leader in the world that was during that time instituted, you cannot worship, you have to, you can't worship your God, but you have to worship this. God is still God. Yeah. Amen. Now, I don't care what the governor of this state says. I hope he hears that. I don't care. I hope, I hope you, I don't care what the government of this state does. And he may confess to be a, a religious person, but he is not of my faith. I'll put it that way. He may confess it, but he's not of my faith. I don't care what the president of the United States does. I hope he hears this. And he probably won't. But I hope he, it doesn't matter what he does. God is still God. Yeah. Woo. Regardless of what the future holds for America, God is still God. It's easy to justify or to complain about the fact of the government. Well, our government denies God. It's easy. Well, we can't do that because the government won't let you. They tell you you can't. Let me tell you, I don't care what they say. I'm going to worship God. God is still who he is. He hasn't changed. That's number one. Number one, though the government denies him, he's still God. Number two. Though the world rejects him, he is still God. See, when Nebuchadnezzar done this, everybody, when the music began to play, everybody was afraid of the, of the leadership of the day. So the whole world around Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they began to do exactly what the law told them they were supposed to do. Right? Now, I'm not telling you to go out here and be lawless people. It's not what I'm saying. When it comes to who God is, you stand for the word of God. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Man. Give the word of God. Yeah. 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 The king issued the decree of the people bowed and worshiped the image of gold. For many who were present, it was, that, it was no issue at all for them to obey the command. It's not an issue at all. Fine, I'll just do whatever he tells me to do. I ain't going to do it. See Pagans have no convictions. Are you with me? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Pagan. I was at, I, I was going home, coming back from my sister's the other day, and I stopped at the store and I started going to go and get some, some something to drink. And I thought, no, I'm just going to get one out of the machine. They actually had a machine outside. You don't see that very often. They had a machine, and I put my 75 cents in, whatever it was, put it in, and gave me two drinks. Now, some people would have said, oh boy, one for now, one for later. And there was a time I would have probably done the same thing. 
Oh, boy. But when I got those two, I thought, that's not right. I'm getting So I walked in and to the place, and I said, hey, that thing gave me two drinks. And the guy said, that's okay. The guy that's in here before, we had to give him one because he wouldn't give him. And, and uh, uh, it just gave you his. And I went, well, what do you want me to do? He said, take it home. I said, thank you very much. I'm going out the door. Now, see, I've done that because my convictions wouldn't let me do anything else. Now, see, if you've got no convictions, somebody help the pastor, right? Then, then you got no morale. Anything goes. You can say anything. You can do anything. But the God that lives inside of me, that when I yeah. do make mistakes, to tweak on me a little bit and say, wait a minute, you ain't supposed to do that. You're not supposed to say that. You're not supposed to. You're not. And so, there, so I begin to adjust. Now, I like the old song we used to sing when, when years and years ago. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. And that's what he's doing. He's still working. So we need to understand that that. That people that do not know him, they have no problem not bowing. They have no problem not serving. But see, for us, you know, we're not like the world. We're not, we're not, we're not even supposed to be. We're not supposed to look like them. We're not supposed to act like them. Or you mean? I don't even know this world. But number three, I've got to hurry. Though his followers may forsake him, he's still God. Let me say that again. Though his followers may forsake him, he's still God. Amen. Now, Pastor, where's that got anything to do with this message? Let me show you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was from Israel. Israel was Hebrew. Jerusalem was the capital city. They had the temple. They had the Ark of the Covenant. But let me tell you, they brought more than four Hebrew children out of that place. And the rest of them were just trying to melt in with society, just blend in. There was more than, there was, I promise you, there was more than just three Hebrew children that when the music began to play, but they bowed the knee. See, even though other, I don't care what other churches do. I don't care what other churches accept. I don't care what other organizations do. And there are organizations that accept about anything that's coming down the pipe. But I will stand for what is right with the Word of God. I ain't going to be offensive. I won't be giving you faith. And I'm going to say what is right is right, and God is still God, and He has not changed. Somebody help the pastor and understand that, that we'll worship Him anyway. Amen. Let me hurry this morning. Number four, through, though troubles come, I will still choose to follow Him. Though troubles come, and they will, you might say, Pastor, I ain't never had no trouble. We'll just keep breathing, it's coming. I ain't never had no trouble. Well, hallelujah for you. Amen. Come on. I got your dose and somebody else's too. It comes. So coming to music, I'm coming to a close this morning. We're living in a generation. Now, I am thankful for Witness City. I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for this body of people. I'm thankful for the leadership that's at this church. I'm blessed. I am blessed. I sent a little video clip last night as the rehearsal, as they were rehearsing the worship team, was rehearsing and getting ready to go next Saturday. And then, actually, next Sunday, Sister Allison will be here. And so they were, they were, they were worshiping. I just sent a little video clip, and I said, I am so blessed. I said, listen, listen to this little clip of our worship team. Send it to a friend of mine. They said, next Sunday, sure. I know I'm blessed. And we are blessed today. And you look around, you see what a great crowd of folks that's in this room. And I'm very thankful for you. I'm thankful that we had people standing in the back. They're still back there. And I'm thankful that people scooted over, give people room. And I'm thankful we're getting ready to build a, 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 a building that seats about 600 plus. And I'm, I'm ready for it. I don't know about you. I'm past ready for it. I'm ready to, to, to change our community. Because God is still God. Yeah. Yeah. He's still God. He's not changed. Now, let me just kind of take that. I'm talking to you today. You're in this room this morning. You're sitting in this seat. You're not here by accident. It's, it's not accident. God's got a divine purpose for everything. So you're here today, and you've got some stuff. Somebody say stuff. you got some stuff going on in your life. The three Hebrew children could not help that they were captured. They couldn't do anything about it. It's just stuff. It's life. It happens. 
in us. And so when stuff happens, how we react is, is, is that defines who we are. How we react. So you're here today and you got some stuff going on in your life. Maybe it's stuff that you've caused. Now I'm not going to ask you to raise a hand because I know the answer to this one. We've all made stupid decisions. Right? We've all done some dumb stuff. Everybody. Sometimes we do it because we don't think it's true. Sometimes we do it because we react too quickly. But we've all done dumb stuff. You're here today and you got stuff in your life. You're, you're a young man, maybe a young dad, young husband, young mother, young wife. Maybe you're not like me, you're not necessarily young. But we still get stuff in life. I want to tell I've come to tell you today, he's still God. You listen to the news, you watch the news, you get overwhelmed with what's going on in the world. He is still God. He hasn't changed. He's still God. You're here today and your life may be in turmoil. You may be in sin. He's still God. And the God that I serve loves you no matter who you are. So you need to give your heart to him. So today, is you stand with me around this house. I want you to bow your heads. Now, not, I, I will not embarrass you. I won't let any. I'll, let me say this as a pastor. I won't let anybody embarrass you. You're here today and you want to say, Pastor Bruce, I know I'm not here by accident. I know there's some things in my life. I know that I need, I want to see God for who God is for me. I really feel like saying there's somebody, there's a young man in this room, maybe a young lady here, that, that maybe you've you've tried serving him, you've walked with him, sir, but just life happened. And he got off track. He will say, Pastor, would you just pray for me? I really need, I want to just raise your hands and just pray for me. Come on. Come on, young man. Come on. Young lady, just slip it. I won't embarrass you. Thank you, son. Somebody else. Just pray for me, Pastor. I need prayer. You can slip it up. You can take it right back down. Just put your hand up. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Somebody else. Pastor, I need, I need some prayer. I need, to, I need to know God is real. I need to feel Him. I need to see Him. Would you just slip your hands up and pray for me? Somebody else. Oh, thank you. Quickly. I'm not going. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Somebody else. several hands going up today. We had some that didn't that needs to. You are looking. I want you to look at me. I'm looking. You are looking at a guy that's been through some hell in my life. That's been through some hard times. Do you know what got me through that? Is it because of who I am? No, it's not. It's because of Britney City? No, it's not. Is it because Is it because of, uh, of finances? No, it's not. Is it because of education? No, it's not. Is it because of community jumping in? No, it's not. The reason I am who I am and where I'm at today is because God, mm, I feel the Holy Ghost, is still God. Yeah. He's still God. Now, we had hands to go up in this room. I love you. I'm not going to come get you. I saw the hands. I saw the faces. We had people that didn't. But there are people here today, I feel in my spirit, you need to rededicate your life to Christ. You need to make a commitment to Christ. You need to quit focusing on the things of the world and you start focusing on God. I'm going to ask you, take a real bold statement. Come out from where you're standing. Come to this altar. I promise you, someone will meet you and help you. Or this